Thanks for joining us. I'm Gemma Sampson. I'm an advanced sports dietitian based in Girona, and I am to inspire people to move more, eat mindfully, and fuel their training. And today I'm chatting with Sammy Monday, who is a professional cyclist riding for Team Nova Nordisk. Oh, Team Nova Nordisk. Thank you for joining me today, Sammy. No worries. Thank you for having me along. Yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a pleasure. Um, I always like it, talking with people with different experiences. And so for you, having type 1 diabetes, I've worked with uh, people in the past who have that and they've always been a little bit unsure about what to do with um, with cycling and if they, if they can do exercise. And obviously you can. So I'd love to hear you explain what type 1 diabetes means for you as, a, as an athlete. Yeah, um, I think for me, uh, so it's a privilege to be able to race professionally for Team Novo Nordisk. Uh, for those who don't know, it's the world's first all diabetic professional cycling team and also sporting team. Um, so I think we're, it's all quite unique as every, everyone in the team has, has diabetes. Um, and yeah, we have our, our main goal is to inspire, educate and empower um, all of those affected by diabetes, not just diabetics themselves. Um, but I think it's often one thing that like being with type one diabetes that you don't really understand the full concept of it. Um, I even know when I first was diagnosed 12 years ago, um, I didn't, I hadn't really even heard of it, heard of it before. So um, yeah, I think like type one, being a type one diabetic, it basically means it's an autoimmune condition where your insulin doesn't, where your pancreas doesn't produce any insulin, um, which is something that is naturally, um, it just occurs, um, these processes naturally in every everyone else who isn't diabetic. Um, so it's quite a key thing in terms of fueling and nutrition because uh, without insulin, then you're not getting uh, muscles to the glycogen, uh, sorry, glycogen to your muscles. Um, and being able to use that for energy. So we have to take insulin injections to make sure that our blood sugar levels are maintained and also um, that we're able to get fuel into our muscles. Um, so to put it probably simply, that's about it. So without insulin, we really cannot do anything. We, you, we wouldn't live. Um, and then it's even more important to optimize insulin nutrition and blood sugar levels in turn particularly as a, an athlete and a professional athlete yeah because i guess also it's then really important to ensure that your blood sugar levels aren't getting too low as well exactly it's uh such a balance like keeping it low and high because you have the consequences of both particularly when training um and just operating every day because it affects how you you feel how you function perform and yeah, it's quite a complex thing as I think a lot of people are now starting to find out um, blood sugar level does control a lot of um, everyday, everything in like energy levels and just how you function and um, being healthy in general. So that's really the, the goal and balance is to get everything right to maintain um, as stable glucose levels as possible. Yeah. Well, I guess, and sometimes people think that your blood sugar levels are just this flat line, but it will naturally go up and down a lot throughout the day and when you're training too. Exactly. I think, um, yeah, depending on what you eat and when you're training, food, uh, stress, adrenaline, there's so many uh, sickness, so many factors, heat, um, dehydration, like it, it's quite, it becomes quite a complicated thing. And I think it's taken me, I think every day I'm just learning something new about managing diabetes as a person, uh, but also as a professional athlete and what are the best ways to um, optimize that, uh, particularly in regards to nutrition. Yeah. And so do you, you obviously have to measure your blood glucose, your blood sugar levels regularly. Do you have like a continuous monitor or how does that work for you? So in the team, we all use continuous glucose monitors. Um, so I wear one pretty much all the time uh, throughout the day. So I've got that, which has been a really uh, useful tool um, in terms of tracking your glucose levels, but also rather than having to do a finger stick, which 
Um, using the blood glucose monitor, I would have to do up to maybe a dozen times a day. Uh, and particularly when I was younger, there wasn't any technology in terms of glucose meters. So that's made um, main, keeping track and maintaining good blood sugar levels so much easier having this technology. Yeah, well, I suppose, yeah, I suppose when you were getting um, diagnosed, this is going back 12 years ago, that's probably when I first got introduced to continuous glucose monitoring. And I suppose that was very much the early days of what we have now available to do this. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's definitely made my life easier. And I know everyone um, within the team, but also so many other diabetics have kind of become a little bit reliant on these devices and the incredible data that they can show. So. Yeah. And so a couple of weeks ago, I bumped into you outside the sort of the cafe and we we're having a bit of a chat about nutrition. And you were saying how, I guess now you're probably eating more carbs than you've ever eaten before, but then you're also, you're, you're leaner, you're stronger, you're more powerful, you're training a lot better as well. Yeah. I think it's, it's something everyone probably makes a mistake as an athlete um, is under fueling, but I think being a diabetic, you always understand the, the importance of uh, really good nutrition um, but in particular I would say I've probably I now um, would consume a lot more on the bike um, and really optimizing nutrition uh, before during and after training and I think that's had a huge difference in terms of um, my performance overall health uh, recovery basically every aspect um, and made me yeah fitter uh, stronger like you said, leaner than I was before. Um, and I think nutrition has had a really big part in this um, and particularly feeling a lot, a lot more on the bike. Like at the moment, we're probably um, our team nutritionist and coaches and other staff would like us to be having up to around 90 grams an hour, particularly during racing um, and during hard training, like probably no less than 60 grams of carb. Whereas before I was probably only doing half of that. And um, now I think you just notice there you've got so much more energy on the bike and towards the end of training, you don't come home and starving hungry or also have no energy to kind of function for the rest of the day. So that's probably one of the changes I've made recently is a really um, particular focus on fueling well on the bike and as much as um possible really um and i think that's had a big a huge impact on performance and how i feel in general yeah well i mean that's some, it's something that i see quite regularly with with professionals and amateurs alike and it's interesting you mentioning about the um that sort of after effect of when you go home and you just just keep needing to eat all the time if you have perhaps under fueled when you've been training yeah exactly i think um we all make that mistake where you hunger flat out out training or something but I think now like oh or when you get home you just feel like eating everything um but yeah I feel like if you feel super well on the bike it just takes away that that need and you don't really have the craving for you know just eating whatever's kind of in front of you when you get back and really then being able to maintain good nutrition throughout the day uh, or the rest of the day um, and getting like the best recovery you can as well yeah and that's why I talk to people a lot about that where the importance of fueling your training and where I guess the training then dictates how much you, that you eat and rather than trying to play catch up um, if you adjust the food intake and the energy intake the carb intake according to the training the hours the duration the intensity then you, you just have such a better um, normalized appetite the rest of the day oh exactly yeah um, when you're eating a lot more on the bike uh and fueling like really well before, during and after that training. It's, I must say, I'm not super hungry for then the rest of the day, as long as I've maintained that well. Um, and I do notice if I did probably have a little bit, like not quite enough food during a hard or long training session, I will kind of feel the effects of that in terms of tiredness, hunger, everything for the rest of the day. So then I know to um, recognize those signs and, take note of what I did uh, consume during training and afterwards. So then you correct on those mistakes uh, if you do end up making them. Yeah. 
Very good. And so like, what sort of things do you eat um, in training versus racing? Is it the same or do you eat differently? What kind of foods or drinks or gels or things do you have? Um, so with Team Nova Nordisk, we're super lucky to have Morton as a big nutrition sponsor for us. Mm -hmm. I think that's really been a bit of a game changer in terms of uh, fueling on the bike um, during training and racing. Uh, their drink mixes and gels, everything's quite amazing um, in terms of being able to take on a lot of carbohydrate without having stomach issues and um, being able to get that hit that carb intake you need without feeling bloated or full. Um, I always had a, a bit of an issue with like gels and I think most people do upsetting their stomach, but I've really found with Morton, you can take quite a lot of it and um, up to probably I've had and experimented with it up to hundred grams of carb, um, more or less an hour um, of just Morton products, gels and mix and didn't have any stomach issues at all. Okay. So during racing, I would use mostly just Morton, um, the gels, the drink mixes. And then if it's a longer, less intense stage or something, mix it up with a little um, solid food, such as rice cakes um, and some bars. Uh, but keep it pretty simple in racing. And for training, I like to use, I do use quite a bit of the Morton um, mixes. I, th I find it's good for keeping a good baseline energy and particularly during intense training, um, using more of that. But I also like to, I love to cook. So um, I make probably nearly all of my ride food, okay. uh, whether that be rice cakes, always have rice cakes made up, um banana oat bars like yeah banana and oat bars bars or some kind of date date ball um, i kind of experiment a little bit and all the time uh, i think making something that's also quite nutritionist and uh, has good nutrition is quite easy in terms of the bar um but also i like to make it so it's enjoyable to eat on the bike. I think it's kind of important, particularly during longer, less intense days. Then you also don't come home craving junk food or anything like that. So. That's it. And if you enjoy, especially if you enjoy and you've got the time to cook or um, you can always stick things at like bars and or like flapjacks or whatever into the freezer as well. Yeah, exactly. I think I always try to make a big batch. So there's always something on hand because um, I'm not a big fan of just the store-bought bars or energy bars and stuff I try to avoid them as much as possible yeah well, I suppose it's, it's like they've got their place uh, if, if sort of you run out and you, you're in the cupboard but um like would, do you have like a particular favorite like rice cake recipe or ingredients that you put in them the standard one I like it pretty basic I must say I have our team Swanya Boris I got the recipe from him so it's a bit of like a secret his secret recipe which he's quite proud of um, <laughs> that's like the base recipe which is I don't use cream cheese in mine I know some people do that I prefer it just with really just more rice and a bit of coconut oil a few other things uh, but in terms of flavor coconut is probably my favorite flavor in general like just uh, coconut on its own or coconut and something else uh, so I would generally just do coconut but I would mix in coconut sugar uh, for sweetener and then some powdered desiccated coconut and also coconut flakes um so it's quite simple and subtle in flavor but that's probably my go-to yeah well it's interesting because i find that a lot of people um especially if they've had any gut issues that they that rice cakes in particular can help to settle some of that um i think just the rice sits well and is easily absorbed particularly when training or racing yeah exactly so i really yeah i enjoy the rice i think you can kind of bulk up a rice cake to well, it's got a good amount of carbs in it for the size um, and super cheap and easy to make. So I think on the bike, whether it's kind of hot or cold, they're easy to eat compared to some of the bars that probably turn pretty solid in the, in the cold and then also aren't so easy to get down when it's warm. So I think yeah. they're all around probably the easiest and best um, ride food to make. A hundred percent. Do you, do you make yours in a, in a, like in the pot or in a rice cooker? I just do it in a pot. Yeah, just pretty old school method, but 
yeah I just do it in the pot as well and I've even done it before where I literally had an hour between like them being cooked and yeah. depending on the bike to kind of get them cold um so that they can be made last minute it's better to sort of give them a bit more time but it can yeah. be done yeah I'm I must say I've never used a rice cooker so I <laughs> yeah yeah just always rice in the pot Okay, that's cool. And so like in terms of like what you eat, like sort of the rest of the day, do you have any like default, um, like after training, like meals, lunches or dinners or anything? Um, yeah, pretty, keep it pretty simple, but I like to eat something, a lot of variety um, with what I do eat. So always in the morning, particularly during, tr for training, it'll be something oat based 90% of the time, um, particularly if it's like longer, more intense training. So I do a lot of now coming into summer overnight oats um, mm -hmm. up to like soak the oats and mix through with dried fruits and nuts. Um, and then always like probably serve with some fresh fruit, fresh berries, banana. Um, I love nut butters. So like a little bit of peanut butter or almond butter on top. Uh, I also like make my own of that. So it's always, I think breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. Um, getting in a good nutritious breakfast, I, I think super important for just having energy and being well prepared for the rest of the day in terms of nutrition. Um, and then also eggs. I'm a big love eggs. So post-training would generally involve eggs and whether that be with salad, maybe some wraps or um, bread, something quick and easy. Um, Otherwise, quinoa and rice, I always, or some roasted veggies, um, like to kind of pre prepare ahead and have some of those things in the fridge. And also homemade hummus is a big one that I do once a week. Um, so then when I do get back from training, it's normally a mix of some kind of grain um, and some veg some fresh veggies, maybe some roasted veggies thrown in and then a source of protein like uh, eggs or maybe some tuna. Um, yeah, I really kind of vary it up depending on what's in the kitchen. Um, yeah, and then I'd say I'd probably, I spend a lot of time cooking, so just purely because I enjoy it. So I'm always kind of experimenting with different flavors and just everything. Um, yeah, and then I'm guessing you have, to, you have to eat a lot to fuel all that training too. Exactly, yeah, yeah, so um, focusing on getting a good amount of food in just immediately after or well, not immediately after, but close to when I'm finished training showered, um, making sure you're getting that fuel in for the rest of the day. And then in the evenings um, really depends on the season. Like I think with the weather now coming into summer, I love a lot of just fresh. I'm a big fan of seafood. So I don't eat a lot of meat in general, but I do eat quite a bit of uh, seafood. So even just some of the, you just love salmon with um, some roasted, roasted sweet potato and salad. That would be probably like a pretty basic meal. Um, but then also I'm making sure I'm getting a good mix of carbs, protein um, and everything. But particularly if I've got a, a following, a, a big training day. Um, yeah. I'd also, yeah, I think after in summer too, after long rides, um, now that it's getting warmer, I do love big like smoothies. I'll make a lot of smoothie bowls at home. You can really, I find they're great um, to replace like uh, fluid levels for hydration, but also you can kind of bulk them up pretty easily. Even I like to throw in like frozen bananas, berries, protein powder, even an avocado. Um, so you can get that nutrition density and also um, without having too much bulk as well. Yeah, uh, especially if, you that, appetite, if your appetite's a bit low, if, you, um, if it's hot or you've been doing hard training intensity, I, I find that using smoothies can be a really good way to, like say, get all those vitamins and minerals on from the fresh fruit or, and obviously you can chuck in some spinach and veg and um and it's one of those things you can have like your base recipe but then depending on what the goals are you can add fats or you can add some extra carbs or more fiber to make it a bit more substantial or not yeah definitely so i'd say in summer and now even when it's it's been pretty warm 
past few days, although it's pretty, it's quite hit and miss at the moment. Um, but I've been loving yeah, having some smoothies, particularly when it's, you've done maybe a long training ride fueled super well. Um, and it's already like later in the evening, uh, just to kind of have a good meal, but so you're not super full getting in enough nutrients, but not super full before having dinner. Um, yeah. yeah. Sounds good. So yeah, plenty of carbs on the menu then by the sounds of it. Yeah, exactly. I think I've never really restricted carbs. I think it's such a key, um, it's it's needed for performing well particularly as a well as an athlete you need carbs so i do probably periodize it a little bit um in terms of the timing and loading on heavier days um but particularly when i'm training hard and stuff i without carbs i'm pretty useless i just find i'm sleepy can't really concentrate focus and i don't feel good in general so um no, definitely. Um, I'm always an advocate for the importance of carbs. Very good. Do you have any final words of wisdom? Um, not, I would just say in general that probably, yeah, just in terms of fueling on the bike, I think a lot of people, I still see some of my mates when I'm out training with them and a lot of them are other professionals themselves um, under fueling during training. So I think you may not, it may not seem like you feel it at the start of training, but I think it's super important to just remind yourself, even if you don't want to eat um, at the time to just have that little like alert in your mind that you need to feel during the session, because you really will start to feel it towards the end of training. Um, and also it just affects your recovery and the ongoing training process. So that's one of the key things that I've really focus hard on recently and think it's um, had the biggest impact or nutritional impact on, on my performance and also health in general. Awesome. That makes me happy to hear because that's definitely what I've found myself over the last, uh, the, my, while I've been working as a sports dietitian. So I guess that's where I came in with getting people to move more, eat more mindfully and to fuel their training. So, yeah. yeah, so thank you so much, Heaps, for joining me, Sammy. Um, and I, yeah, until until next time, thanks, everyone, for listening in. Awesome. Thanks, Gemma. Uh, again, it was great to chat to you. You too. Bye. Bye.